Welcome to another video. So, R1 has been everywhere, and it should be because it's a really super good model. And even after O3 Mini, it's still really good, really cheap, and having open weights is a super plus. But, I thought that today I'll tell you guys how you can make your own AI agents with the DeepSeek R1 model that is customized to your tasks and everything like that. Now, creating AI agents can be a bit challenging, and there are multiple ways that you can make AI agents, like with a bunch of frameworks and whatnot. But I'll try to keep everything simple. So I'll be using Vectorshift to make our AI agents. Vectorshift is a pretty good and easy to use AI workflows based AI agent maker, which makes it super easy to create AI agents with a drag and drop interface. And you can then make those agents behave in a chatbot like interface or via an API and connect them in your own applications. It has a bunch of integrations that you can put in your agentic system. Like, you can integrate Notion and make it query something from your Notion notes, or maybe push messages to something like Discord or Slack or anything like that. I have covered it before as well although now it has a newer interface to design the AI agents and everything. So, let me show you how it all works. First of all, you'll need to get yourself signed up on Vectorshift, and there's also a free plan, which is going to be great for most users. Anyway, once you are here, you'll see the following stuff. You can see the pipelines here, which is the major thing where we'll design our AI agent workflows while the other stuff is majorly dependent on that. So, let's first create a new pipeline here. To do that, just hit the new button, and it will open up this page where you can select from some pre-built workflows, or you can just hit this, and it will open up a new canvas where you can design your pipelines accordingly. Here, you can see all these blocks that either bring some knowledge to your workflow or trigger some action at the respective service. And you can drag in the blocks you want to connect and create your own workflow accordingly. So, let me show you how we can create a simple chatbot first. Well, in that case, we'll first need to drag and drop an input here. Now, if you've used Vectorshift before, then you'll see that the blocks look a little different now because they have a much easier way to connect blocks and the output format and data are now clearer as well. So, you can see that this block will give the output as text. Now, we can connect this input to something, like an LLM or a knowledge base, where you can easily make a user input query, a knowledge base, and give the required context from that knowledge base. Or, you can also connect it to some other integration. But since we are creating a simple chatbot, let's add a simple LLM here. Now, in LLMs, you have multiple options like OpenAI, Anthropic, Perplexity, or an open source LLM, something like that. Now, to use DeepSeek, we can just drag in this open source option, and here you'll see the option to use DeepSeek R1 in the model name, which is great. So, just select that. Now, to pass in the prompt, you can just come to the input text box and add two curly braces, and you'll see the options of input that you can connect here. Let's select input 1, and then we can add the output variable that it gives according to the first input after the period. And once you have added it, you can also add string, prepending, or anything as well. You can also put in a system prompt here as well. Once done, you can just drag in the output and then connect it to the LLM by writing double curly braces and then selecting LLM and then using the response variable from there. Now you have a basic workflow that takes input, runs it through an LLM, and gives you the output. Now, you can add whatever you want to this workflow as well. Let's say you want the AI agent here to have the context of your Notion notes, or maybe even have a custom knowledge base. 
Then, you can just drag the Notion integration in and connect it in the workflow as you'd like, and your LLM will have access to that, which is great. You can even add search or some other LLM and route some requests to that LLM based on if-else logic. This allows you to delegate specific tasks to another LLM or do some other kind of flow, which is all super great. Once you have everything figured out, you can just click the Deploy Changes option and it will save your workflow. Then, you can just export it to be an automation, chatbot, search, or form, which is pretty great. Let's select Chatbot. Now, once you select it, you can just enter the chatbot name and then go to the next page. Here, you can configure stuff like how you want the chatbot to look and things like that. Once done, you can just deploy the chatbot, integrate it anywhere, or use it as an API in your own applications. Or, you can also just chat with the chatbot here, which is also great to see. So, that's how you can configure an AI agent with DeepSeek R, one easily via vector shift. Apart from this, you can also do some other stuff like create knowledge bases from here that you can mention in your pipeline and use as well, which is also great. You can just upload the files that your AI agent can reference and take in your custom knowledge base context, which is also pretty great. You can also create voice bots, bulk jobs, portals, evaluations, and stuff like that, which is great. So, that's how you can easily create AI agents with DeepSeek's new R1 model. The new updates make it even better to use, and the variables and everything are super easy to now reference instead of being in the guessing game of what input you'll get and stuff like that. It's super cool to make automations for your workflows as you wish, which is pretty good to see. The DeepSeek R1 model is actually really good at agentic tasks because it can easily take in reference of the context you want to give it, and it can reason to get the best output, and the best part is that all this is super cheap and even free if you use it personally because you get a good amount of credits with it for free. So. It's great at that. You can also use something like O3 Mini as well, if you prefer that. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.